<laughs> Dear colleagues, good evening. Welcome to our 15th anniversary dinner party. And I'm of course very glad that we have this event on this place, on the deck of this galleon. And this place is of course the right one. It's very symbolic and it is nicely representing what we are as a company. So I ask myself of course on what boat we are here. Is it that of Columbus who went west or was it that of Vasco da Rama going east to the West Indies? Probably the latter one. Anyhow, it's a place to celebrate because that ship to steer at that time was very difficult. You know that in that time, it was the 16th century, the problem was not solved to know what is the longitude you are <laughs> on the sea. So, insofar, Vasco da Gama, respectively Columbus, I think, were also very lucky to find new land and to sail from Europe, east or west. I was on a similar boat last summer in the Mediterranean. It was also a nice old wooden uh, sailboat, uh, a cage with two masts. And the owner and captain said, oh, you know, today, very easy to navigate. And of course, it was easy. They had this old boat, a Raymarine, a uh, chart plotter, and a dark <laughs> handheld navigator. Sure, you can't do it. But that was different at the time of our Columbus or Oscar da Gama. Now, what was the resolution of the problem at that time? The resolution was to have a precise watch. Because you needed to know what is the relative distance in aspects of time. And in the 16th century, this was not available. It took until the 18th century to get the problem resolved precisely by a British watchmaker. I have to say that as a Swiss guy, it was not Swiss watchmakers, it was UK watchmakers. <laughs> hey. Hey. Well, it, was, uh, it was John Harris in 1759 who was able to build, after more than 15 years, the first precise watch and he made several important innovations to make it happening. It was an innovation on temperature compensation. We know that topic also. <laughs> it was uh, the innovation of the uh, roller bearings. It was the innovation to use, um, um, how do you call it, the, uh, the jewels uh, for reducing friction in the watch. But it took several more years that the marine guys believed that the watch was precise enough and that now navigation was indeed something that worked and that it became possible to make precise maps and also to precisely find the place you wanted to go. So very similarly with our technology GPS it was not also not an innovation of a one, uh, a one month or one year. You probably know it took precisely 21 years to develop the GPS satellite system. The guy who was the leader was uh, Colonel Parkinson from the Department of Army in the Americas. And he took several attempts to finally have the system crafted and of course satellites in the air that we uh, were working with the perfection as we know it of today. And it was not only this team, it was before another innovation and another very bright man that was necessary to make it happen. It was Einstein without the theories of Einstein with regard to time dilatation and relativity. Also, this system would not work and it would not have been possible to make it. So, I think we can be very proud to be part of that development of that very basic physics that makes their world to work and that we have participated in that for 15 years now to build our company. And now 
I think it's very similarly. It was a spirit of innovation. It was the power to achieve something, to believe you can make it that brought the company to the size and position we have today in the market. It was not the work of a one man or of a few men. By the way, also the watch that John Harrison made was not only his work, he had several watchmakers behind him making it happening. And of course also the GPS satellite system was a huge team effort. It's a team effort here as well. And I'd like you really to thank you for what all you do every day, what you have done over many years, most of you, to bring us to that position. And in the far, I can only hope that we will luckily steer our boat into the future. And I really hope that the stars here in the sky are delivering good luck to us. So in the far, thank you very much. Enjoy this anniversary and enjoy the evening. Thank you. Thank you so much for the excellent speech from Mr. Thomas. So right now, I would like to want to invite GM of Asia, Mr. Andrew.